Um, anytime you're going to do something like this, whether it be plastic for a greenhouse or a low tunnel or frost blankets or anything like that, you can bet the wind's going to blow. No doubt in my mind. All you got to do is think about putting on some kind of row cover. The wind's going to start blowing. Good morning guys welcome back to lick branch farms in today's video we're going to talk about season extension and i'm going to give you some examples of what we use here on our farm but before we get into that guys if you're new to our channel we want you to feel welcome we hope you'll consider subscribing lick branch farms is a four season market farm meaning that we farm specifically for market we do sell to a couple of chefs and a couple of restaurants not so much right now but as the season moves on into warmer season crops we will pick that up we go to several different farmers market throughout the state moore county richmond county um, we go to Asheboro, and this year we may be going to hope mills we have a certification to manufacture acidified food, meaning we can pickle things and carry those to market. And my wife Betsy has a uh, kitchen inspection, a certification where she can make baked goods in our home and sell them to the public. Kind of trying to hang out in the high tunnel because it is windy today. It is actually gusting to 35, 40 miles an hour outside right now. So when we're talking season extension on our farm, we're talking about methods that makes our season longer so we can harvest vegetables into the cooler part of the season or we're talking about methods that we use to get the season started so, uh, sooner earlier um with that being said you know it can range from us using just regular weed mat to help germination to get the soil temperature warmer or it can be like putting poly low tunnels on or things of that nature this high tunnel, this is a method of season extension, um, one way or the other, either into the fall or earlier in the spring. But either way you look at it, it's actually creating a mini microclimate to where we can manipulate the plants into thinking that they're growing in a different zone or in a different warmer area or different part of the year. In a nutshell, that's just basically how we're breaking it down. My germination chambers inside the barn, they're basically a form of season extension. We're germinating those plants under controlled conditions to manipulate the seed or the start into thinking that it's growing in a different time or in a different uh, in a different weather pattern. So with that being said, I'm gonna give you a few examples of how we do things. Um, I just recently started doing this, so you know, there's nothing, but it seems to be working great. I mean, I'm seeing really good things out of the starts that I'm putting in here. But up under this mat, these are snow peas. I just started these guys about three days ago, and you can see we're already getting germination on. You see these right here sprouting already, but underneath that weed mat, there is a cable, and it's called a gutter heater, that is looped underneath those starts. And you can see, well, you can't see it laying there, but the trays are sitting on top of it. And these guys here have been in here maybe a week, um, and they've doubled inside. I mean, really, they have. And I think if you look back on a few videos, you'll see um, how small they actually were. These guys here are getting ready to go outside. They got about five more days, and they're going out in the main garden. Matter of fact, I'm going to be working on getting those beds ready today. Um, we got some cooler weather coming in this weekend, so I'm not really going to put anything else out until after that. But... Yeah, those guys are going in the ground here in about five days. So yeah, this cable actually, I mean, if you let it run itself, I mean, it'll get hot, it'll get 100 degrees, but um, I put it on a thermostat like for a regular heat mat. And if you look back on some of the shorts, I did a short on that. But yeah, this uh, cable, I can control the temperature by putting a probe inside one of these trays and setting it on a 75, 80 degrees or whatever, and it'll cut itself off and on and, mo and moderate that temperature in here inside of this protective culture and keep those seedlings happy. I mean, we're in February, guys, and look, we've got cabbage you know, ready, and that's broccoli, but we've got cabbage and broccoli ready just about to go in the ground, which I've got some outside that is actually ready. Um, we're just waiting on that magic number. And that number is really the nighttime temperatures to be moderately in the lower side of the 40s, preferably mid side of the 40s. But once we see a steady trend where the nighttime temperatures are staying in the low 40s, then we'll put cabbage and stuff outside simply because, you know, I don't want to put anything out there and we get hit with a 25 or 30 degree night and wind up killing some of them. Yeah, we've been jostling some plants around trying to get everything inside of here out of the hot or out of the germination chamber and to get some more plants in. I've got to start some more squash and uh, zucchini today. But yeah, these plants here, most of these, I got some 
uh, tomatoes that are up potted are actually going to go in this row as soon as I finish harvesting some of this lettuce. We've got some cucumbers and stuff like that, some zucchini and squash that we're keeping in here. Um, didn't want to leave them outside. It's not incredibly cold, but that wind is strong and I don't want them to break the plants off. Right, so I'm going to give you some examples of some of the plants that we've got that we used uh, season extension strategies and things of that nature to actually get started. These guys here I just up potted yesterday, so they're out here trying to drink up some of the sunshine. This is Bilco cabbage and it's ready to go in the ground. I bet I can reach in here and pop one of these right out of the tray. Yeah, see these guys here? They're ready to go in the dirt. And these are gonna be the first planting. That farro cabbage there is gonna be another planting. And this is Bilco also. But I've got some Katarina right here. It's looking really good. It's probably got another two weeks and it's ready. And I got some uh, Thunderhead that is actually ready. It's been ready for a while. I had started it back in December and been dragging it along a little bit but it's it's good they're good transplants they're ready to go in the ground so in the last video i told you guys that we had something going on with these hawker eye turnips that i wanted to show you and when i was out here shooting this video for this uh chicken manure i lifted the tarp that we had set up on these guys here to aid in the germination process because it was still it was pretty cold when we we put these guys in the uh in the ground and i used a jang and direct seeded these guys and you can go back and watch that video to see the method the rollers the spacing and things of that nature but i pulled the tarp back and got a you know a, a good surprise and we have got pretty good germination on these guys right here and you can see it is actually all the way down the road <laughs> And these are hawker eye turnips. These are what you call white salad turnips. And they are cold hardy. They can take a little bit of cold weather. But these young um, starts or these young seedlings are not going to be able to take some of the weather that we got coming. So that is the topic of today. We're going to put a low tunnel. Well, I say a low tunnel. It's not a polytunnel. It's a low tunnel structure over these guys. And we're going to use a form of frost protection. I've got some frost blankets that we're going to stretch over these hoops. And we're basically going to create a new microclimate for these guys. So in a nutshell, basically we take half inch EMT. I got a jig that I made. It's on a three foot radius and you can look it up on YouTube. There's a ton of videos out there that shows you how to do this. Basically, you make a three foot radius jig and you bend this. 10 foot pieces of conduit into a semicircle and you make basically a low tunnel structure that's what this is right here and it takes six for a 50 foot row and i went and took some baling twine and went in between each and kind of put tied them together to make them a little more rigid um anytime you're going to do something like this whether it be plastic for a greenhouse or a low tunnel or frost blankets or anything like that you can bet the wind's going to blow no doubt in my mind all you got to do is think about putting on some kind of row cover the wind's going to start blowing all right guys so i've been working at uh this first beat row so i've got one of two done and this is what it looks like when we get done now this is another means of uh season extension because this stuff this black mulch it will heat up really really quick and i think i might have a piece of a video that i shot the other morning with the steam coming off of this stuff just as soon as the sun come up and that gives you an indication that that black mulch is drawing that heat and it's heating the ground up really really quick and the wind's still blowing hard i don't know if you can tell or not but uh i've got some beet seeds that i primed yesterday then i'm gonna go in here and and start in some trays and then uh, we'll see what it looks like here in a couple hours see if we can get this row cover put on this low tunnel all right guys well the sun's going down uh you can see over there we probably got about another 30 45 minutes of daylight and we're gonna try to get this uh this frost blanket over top of this and the wind has dropped off considerably i mean this might be five miles an hour earlier today it was it was rocking the sides of that high tunnel so but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to manage this thing by myself. Jace took off toward the house. He's got some homework to do, but I think I can manage it. I got some uh, spring clamps. Now, these things right here are invaluable around here, especially with dealing with plastic and things of that nature. Um, I think I got these at Harbor Freight. I did a bunch of them whenever. I got a bunch of them when I put our pool liner in, and I think I bought a whole box of them. And I mean, I use them for everything around here. And we're also going to use some zip ties. Now, once we get the fabric pulled as tight as we want it we're going to circle it around this post that i got the uh the baling twine hooked to and then we'll run a zip tie around it to kind of hold it on there maybe if we time it just right 
we can get it over. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these uh, galvanized um, poles. This is what I use for uh, Florida weave on my determinant tomatoes. And I'm going to just go down through here and drop a piece off every once in a while to kind of hold the bottom down. But like I said, the wind might kick back up the seeding. This will give me something I can lay down on here to kind of keep the wind from getting up under it for right now. I got a plan that I want to try. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but so all right. I've got this end pulled pretty tight, and I kind of give you an idea of how I've done this. But so what I did basically was gather all of this up from both sides, and kind of I kept pulling on it, and kept pulling on it, kept pulling on it till I got it to where I thought that it was pretty um, taut all the way around, and basically I stuck it right up under that piece of pipe that i drove in the ground to tie the uh baling wire or ba baling twine to and all i'm going to do is ball it up and tuck it up under here and then i'm going to take my zip tie and i got and i'm going to get all that in a bunch i'm going to take that zip tie and i'm going to pull all this stuff up into a pretty good ball like this and with that knot in the front I'm kind of cinch it up like this and that is what we're going to call good and you can see maybe a little slack here and there but i can kind of use the sides and manipulate that and pull some of it out i don't know that i want it super tall like i said this stuff is thin and you can see from where we had it pegged down in the strawberry field how it's done rip some but that's why i'm using this one because i'm gonna cut this in and i'm gonna use some of that inside the high tunnel over them tomatoes and all and kind of keep it off of those but yeah, I got this in here to work with. You can see how the slack is falling in there. And basically, all I really got to do is pull on it here and there, and it'll pull right out, just like you see that. So I'm going to get with this and try to get this stuff knocked out. Like I said, the sun's going down. The temperature's dropping quick. And it's supposed to get down into the mid-30s tonight, so it's a good time to go ahead and get this done. So I'm just going down through here and taking these galvanized pots and kind of rolling them up in that mat and just leaving them laying flat. I kind of help add a little bit of weight to the side in case the wind does get up tonight. It won't get up under here and lift this thing off like a kite. Hopefully, anyway. Hope I don't come down here in the morning and this stuff's in the trees. Believe you me, it's happened. I had a strawberry field down there. And then Betsy went to market one Thursday and come back. And all of my row cover was in the woods. And then you know, I put it on as best i can but if you get under and look now there's none on it but i took all the eight foot t-posts that i had and laid on top of it and that stopped it all right so that is it when we started out this morning all we had was a couple of uh bows up you can see now that is actually going to protect those turnips down to see if i get three degrees out of this out of that 19 then it should get it down to 29 degrees and that should be just enough because i'm hoping with that black mulch and the use of that uh that row cover then that's going to give us some kind of thermal battery plus be able to release that heat overnight that'll stop it from freezing anyway so that's my hope anyway all right so i'm gonna take that little piece that i got left over i'm gonna put over my tomatoes in that high tone i'm not gonna move them inside because they they already hardened off, but I am going to double that fabric up and put them on top, and we should be good there. But glad to have that part done. Now there's probably going to wind up being three more down through here by the time I get everything else planted. All right, guys, that's what we're going to call a wrap for this video. Like I said, if you are a market farmer or a just a real serious backyard gardener, you're going to use some kind of season extension to get a jump start on the season or to push your crops in later into the fall or into the wintertime. So if you liked anything you saw in the video or you found something useful, go ahead and give us a big thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Guys, we appreciate you stopping by. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.